You know, I always say a great way to start Shabbat is crawling around on the floor of the bima. I am but dust and ashes. You know, I always say. Okay. It seems okay. to be okay. I, I, yes, I'm glowing. All right, I'm going to mute everybody. So welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to those of you who are here in person. Welcome to those of you who are on Zoom, which is quite a lot of you. Um, I'd like for us to take a moment, I know we're getting started late, to just breathe. I certainly need to do that for a minute. Everything is okay. Even though a lot of things are not okay. We can try to make space for some peace. It's been a hard week for us as a country and for many in our community, our, our congregational community, it's been a very hard week as well, personally. <laughs> Excuse me, that's what comes of crawling on the bima. Tonight, because Yom Yerushalayim is coming at sunset tomorrow, we, um, are having members of our Artsa committee lead parts of the service. So thank you to Yvette for organizing that. Oh no, she's shaking me off. And thank you to Tamara. I'm looking right at you and calling you Yvette. Sorry, Tamara, of course it was Tamara. I meant to say Tamara. I, I guess I'm not, I'm not centered enough yet. Okay. Okay. <sighs> All right. We welcome, we welcome Shabbat. We welcome a time to put down what we're carrying from the week for at least a little while. So let's begin on page 126. I begin with a prayer of gratitude for all that is holy in my life. God needs no words, no English or Hebrew, no semantics and no services, but I need them. Through prayer, I can sense my inner strength, my inner purpose, my inner joy, my capacity to love. As I reach upward and outward in prayer, I sense these qualities in my creator. To love God is to love each other to work to make our lives better. To love God is to love the world God created and to work to perfect it. To love God is to love dreams of peace and joy that illumine all of us and to bring that vision to life. We turn to the candle, candle lighting and candle blessings and Tamara is uh, going to do that for us. So why don't you come over here in front of the computer and speak as loudly as you can? Yes. Sure. O source of light and truth, creator of the eternal law of goodness, help us to find knowledge by which to live 
lead us to take the words we shall speak into our hearts and our lives. Lest all who enter the sanctuary in need, all who bring the offerings of their heart, may our worship lead us to acts of kindness, peace, and love. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Kitshanu Bemitzvotav Vetzivanu Lehadlikner Shel Shabbat. Amen. And now for the Kiddush, I'd like to invite Gail Levine Fried to the Bima. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who finding favor with us, sanctified us with mitzvot. In love and favor, you made the holy Shabbat our heritage as a reminder of the work of creation. As first among our sacred days, it recalls the exodus from Egypt. You chose us and set us apart from the peoples. In love and favor, you have given us your holy Shabbat as an inheritance. Praise to you, Adonai, who sanctifies Shabbat. Baruch ata Adonai, Mikadesh HaShabbat. Amen. Amen. Asher Krishna Bhitsvata Peratsavano The Shabbat Kotsho Behavavratsan In Hilano Sikaram Mahase Bereshit Ivoyam Tikila We turn now to page 146 for the Baruch Hu, and I invite you, if you're able, to rise. Lay, 
la 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 You may be seated. On page 148, I'd like to invite you to read with me. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who speaks the evening into being, skillfully opens the gates, thoughtfully alters the time and changes the seasons, and arranges the stars in their heavenly courses according to plan. You are creator of day and night, rolling light away from darkness and darkness from light, transforming day into night and distinguishing one from the other. Adonai Tsevaot is your name. Ever living God, may you reign continually over us into eternity. Blessed are you Adonai who brings on evening. Baruch ata Adonai hama'ariv aravim. Please rise. Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad You may be seated. Adonai Elohecha, Vechol Evacha, Vechol Nafshecha, Vechol Meodacha, Vahayu Hadvarini Haele, Asheranohi Mitzavecha, Hayom Aleva Vecha. Vishinan Taham Libanaha, Vini Bartaha Baham, Vishiv Taha Bavetaha, Uvlak Taha Batarach, Uv Shah Bechaha, Uv Kumacha, Uksar Tamla Ohot Ayadaha, Vahayulet Hota Fahot Bene Naha. Uktav tam al mizuzot betecha uvisharecha lema hantis keru vasitam et komets fultai noshim lelohecha ani adunai elohecha asher hutzehi tiedcham eretz mitrayim. Liot lachem lelohim ani Adonai elohechem. Page one fifty eight. Reading to me from Ocha. Ya boy boy bim bim ba me ya boy boy bim ba me ya boy boy bim bim ba me ya boy boy bim ba la 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 ya boy boy bim ba la 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 ya boy boy bim ba mi khamo kha bai li ma don na mi khamo kha me dar ba kho na na ba ti 
I would now like to invite Lori to unmute and read for us. You have called us to peace, for you are peace. Grant us the vision to realize these aims. Where there are ignorance and superstition, let there be enlightenment and knowledge. Where there are prejudice and hatred, let there be acceptance and love. Where there are fear, where there are fear and suspicion, let there be confidence and trust. Where there are tyranny and oppression, let there be freedom and justice. Where there are poverty and disease, let there be prosperity and health. Where there are strife and discord, let there be harmony and peace. Baruch atah Adonai, Hamibarach et Amo Yisrael Bashalom. Thank you. Page 160, or perhaps it's 161. Give us a place to rest, Adonai, our God. Bring us into shelter in the soft, long evening shadows of your truth. For with you are true protection and safety, and in your presence are acceptance and gentle love. Watch over us as we go forth. Prepare for us as we return. Spread over us your shelter of peace over all we love over our Jerusalem and yours. Baruch Ata Adonai, hapore sukat shalom aleinu ve'al kol amo Yisrael ve'al Yerushalayim. Page 162. <laughs> Lahasad et hashabat edorot hamberit olam veshamru v'nei Yisrael et hashabat lahasad et hashabat edorot hamberit olam b'ni uven b'nei Yisrael oti leolam oti. Le'olam ve'shamru v'nei Yisrael et ha-shabbat la'asod et ha-shabbat v'dorot ha-merit olam ki shish jamim asod unnoi asod unnoi et ha-shamayim v'et ha-haret Shamru v'nei Yisrael et ha-shabbat la'asot et ha-shabbat v'dorot ha-merit olam v'yom ha-shmi shavat v'yinafash shavat v'yinafash shavat v'yinafash v'shamru and I invite Gail Levine Freed to come back up to the Bima to read. Wild Peace by Yehuda Amichai. Not the one of an armistice, not even the one of the vision of wolf and lamb, but as in your heart after an excitement to talk only of a great weariness. I know that I know how to kill 
I am grown up. And my son plays with a toy gun that knows how to open and close its eyes and say, Mama, peace, without the commotion of turning swords into plowshares, without words, without the sound of heavy seals, let it be light on top like lazy white foam, rest for the wounds, not even healing. And the scream of orphans is passed on from one generation to another, as in a relay race, the baton won't fall. Let it be like wild flowers, suddenly an imperative of the field, wild peace. The tefillah begins on page 164. I invite you, if you're able, to rise. You may be seated. Page 173, I invite you to read with me. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. 
and may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch Ata Adonai, Mekadesh HaShabbat. Page 175. You are with us in our prayer, our love, and our doubt, in our longing to feel your presence and do your will. You are the still clear voice within us. Therefore, O oh God, when doubt troubles us, when anxiety makes us tremble, when pain clouds the mind, we look inward for the answer to our prayers. There may we find you and there find courage, insight and endurance. And let our worship bring us closer to one another that all Israel and all who seek you may find new strength for your service. Baruch Ata Adonai, Sheotcha Levadcha Beyer A Na Avod. Page 174. Ritze, Ritze, Adonai, Eloheinu, Ve'amcha, Yisrael, Utefilatam, Ve'ahava, Tegabar, Tegabar, Utehil, Ratzon, Hamid, Avodot, I'd like to invite Linda to unmute and read. What shall I ask? What shall I ask of you, God? I have all I need. I lack not a thing. And I ask not for me alone, but for many mothers, children, and fathers. And not only in this land, but also in strange and enemy lands. I wish to ask you, for peace, yes, peace I want. And I know you will not refuse a single request from a young girl. 
You created a land of peace, and in it is the city of peace, in which stood a temple of peace. But peace has not come yet. What shall I ask of you, God? Haven't I all that I need? I will ask only for peace. Peace. Thank you. We now continue with our quiet prayer. There are words, if you have a prayer book, on pages 180 and 181. Uh, if you can see the screen, there are words on the screen. But of course, we can always use the words that are in our own hearts. We continue quietly. We turn our thoughts now to those among us and those in our hearts who are ill and who are in need of healing of body, of mind, or of spirit. Our Misha Berach is on page 371. And if you're on Zoom, I'd like to invite you to add names in the chat of anyone for whom you are praying for healing this evening and everyone will have a chance to add names out loud. We hold in our thoughts and in our hearts for healing this evening, Jesse Sakharov, Dan Sacker, Ira Weiss, Allison Plummer, Rabbi Dara Lerner, Susan Sisler, Joellen Fox, Alan Fremer, Valerie Pace, George Landberg, Susan Balecki, Dana Haitkin Nelson, Arlene Rosenthal, Michael Luck, Barbara Weiner, Joan Lifschitz, Elizabeth Lee, Amy Juskowitz Soonseller, Deanna Roth, Jonathan Falkowski, Martha and Ed Vincent, Ingrid Grosso, Audrey Cohen, Eddie DeAngelis, Vicki Lightnaker, Nettie Traumer, Mia Gannon, Jerry Prezioso, Jeff Abel, Patricia Christensen, Monica Beyer, Liz Yasuda, Mark and Paul Steiner, Mimi and Celia Karp, Marion Mandel, Anne Marie Rogan, Sharon Zinn, Nicole Moskowitz, Patty and Erwin Cohen, Jonathan Dash, Carolyn Dash, Steve Abramowitz, Corey Gerard. Bernard Koenig, Donna Saltz, Michelle Feder, Eric Feder, Tamima Feder, Ellen Dufour, Joe DeVito, Todd Petri, Rabbi Joel Soffin, Arlene Scher, Diane Heinzerling, Penny Fisher, Larry Kinsberg, Sixteen Brown, Lori Silverman, Jody Siegel Stein, Saul Siegel, Laurie Hope, Sal Camaso, Lauren and Ian Silverman, 
Jerry Jaffe, B. Ford and family, Sandy and Larry Feldman, Linda Kushner Silverman, and Donovan, son of Sarah. We include also Bonnie, David, and Adam Bruner, Hope Tomsky, Lita, Judith Kors, Sandy and Harriet Green, Marion Munns, Ed Robinson, Joanna Marie, Teresa O'Sullivan, Jimmy Jenkins, Elena Aram, Chanel Kamabach, Juliet Dale, Silver Silva, Jennifer Magoob, DeAndre Wynn, Mary Lou McGivney, Sarah West, Warren Feliz, and those suffering in the Caribbean islands, Israel, India, Afghanistan, or Haiti. Jackson and Tara Kushner, Shelley Samet, David Gershon, Carol and Stevie Doppelt, Ronnie Katlowitz, Sherry Jacobs, Stacy and David Mauser, Hannah Paines, Joy O'John, Fiona Callender, Ron Crickey, Laura Crickey, Susan and Tony Vai, Laney and Larry Vinikow, Jean and Larry Green, Estelle Altor, Eve Heyman, Zizi Potsdam, Bill Eichler, Fred Miller, Merle Prop, Jesse Laban, Alid and Pat Colella, Paul Markowitz, Delphine Wolf, Dottie Tabakman, Jeannie Osiello, Anita Hopper, Rachel, Carol Rose, Pat Rose, Nancy Kelly, Baby James Scarpulla, Elliot Woofsey, Mary Lou McGivney, Ann Kelly, Paul Markowitz, those wounded in gun violence in Buffalo and Texas, and those grieving for loved ones lost to gun violence, and those suffering in Ukraine. Ashley Perlman, uh, all of the family and community in uh, the town where 19 children and two teachers died, the people of U Ukraine, Buffalo, Sam, Sarfati, Bobby, and Dan Baumgarten. Who else has names they would like to add? Tamara? Thank you. Eric? And folks on Zoom, Freema? Hmm. Shelly Belsky, Nathan Amrani, Reva and David Cohen, Lucy Palazzolo, Martin Bennett, Carol Beanstock, Phyllis O'Neill, Kathy's brother, Gabby, Elliot Drucker, Stephen Schneier. And I had on the list uh, Rochelle Ronick. Unfortunately, she passed away um, last night. That's uh, Shari's aunt. So I guess next week I have to put her on the other list, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Linda Feller. Unmute, please, Linda. Sorry. Annie Newsom OVC, Michelle Newsom OVC. Thank you. Anyone else? Diane. Uh, okay, Mickey. Uh, can you unmute, Mickey? Or can someone unmute you? Oh, where'd he go? Okay, uh, Diane Schenker. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I accidentally muted you again. Unmute. Robin Howard. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Lee Wallach and Rose Posey and Gina Rudolph. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. We are also praying for healing for all of those suffering from COVID-19 those who have been hurt in service to our country or Israel, those who have been harmed in the conflict in Ukraine and Syria and uh, Afghanistan and other parts of the world. 
certainly those who have been wounded in the recent gun violence in our subway and um, in Buffalo and um, in Texas, in Uvalde. And all of those who have lost loved ones to these things and those who have been hurt in other disasters, whether natural or human created. Page 371 in the middle of the page. And now we have our special presentations for this Shabbat. Uh, who is first? You're gonna do an introduction. Tamara's gonna do an introduction. And then are you gonna do yours or Ellen's first? Um, mine first. And yours is the women wage piece. Okay, I just wanna have that ready to go. All right, come on over here. Shalom, everybody. Uh, this coming Sunday, as Rabbi Hoover stated, we're going to observe the 55th anniversary of Yom Yerushalayim in recognition of the re reunification of Jerusalem under the Israeli sovereignty, and that happened in 1967. However, as we all know, peace is yet to be achieved within the city, between Israel and Palestine and in the, in the Middle East proper. There are many organizations in Israel that are working towards a lasting peace in this region. Tonight, we would like to introduce you to a few of them. The issues of realizing lasting peace are extremely complex and not easy to resolve. However, we must continue to hold out hope that it will come. As we celebrate this golden city, let us pray for peace within its walls and throughout Israel. Yehi leratzon, there must be a way. And now Yvette's gonna come up with her presentation. I talk into you? I talk. Oh, all right. Oh, interesting. Okay. Our theme tonight is peace and unity in Israel. In fact, since 1948, each government of Israel, with the exception of 1968, has been referred to as a unity government. What does this mean? It is not as positive as it sounds. The Israeli parliament or Knesset has 120 seats. People vote for political parties, not for individuals. In order to qualify for a seat in the Knesset, a party must win 
3.25% of the vote. In 1968, one party won 61 votes and therefore formed a government on its own. Otherwise, parties negotiate with each other to combine as a coalition and reach enough votes to form a majority. This is called a unity government. In, these, in this government, each party hopes to muscle through at least some of its agenda in exchange for joining the coalition. The government will select the prime minister, approve cabinet ministers and set policies. Laws are passed by a simple majority. The coalition must receive Knesset approval. There are many, many political parties. These include parties representing those who are secular, those who are religious, those who are ultra-Orthodox, those who are Ashkenazi, those who are Sephardic, those who are Russian speaking, those who are left-wing, those who are in the political center, those who are right-wing, those who are Zionists, those who are nationalists, those who are anti-Zionist, and those who are Arab. It should come as no surprise that often these coalitions are fragile and that they dissolve easily. Although everyone is elected for a four-year term, since 1988, none have lasted for four years. The governments typically end after about two years when coalitions fall apart, the government dissolves and there's a call for new elections. The current government has been in effect since June, 2021. It has several unique features. Okay, Sorry. I see you. Oh, they have to see me too? So, um, okay. Ideally. I hope they can hear me. Okay, well, thank you. Anyway, um, the current government, okay, I said that. It does not include like, like who the right-wing party of Benjamin Netanyahu for the first time in 12 years. Typically, Likud would combine with Yamina, another right-wing party and other such parties, plus ultra-religious parties to form the government. The ultra-Orthodox constitute 12% of the electorate. In this case, Yesh Atid, a centrist party, and Yamina agreed to work together along with Kahol Levan, a right-wing party, Israel uh, Beitenu, a center-right nationalist party representing the Russian-speaking population, Labor, a left-wing party, New Hope, a center-right to right-wing party, Meretz, a left-wing social democratic party, and Ra'am, an Arab is Islamist party. There is no representation of the ultra-Orthodox at all. The prime ministers will rotate between Naftali Bennett of Yamina and Yair Lapid of Yeshatid. Arab Israelis constitute 20% or 21% of the population of Israel. This is the first time in decades that an Arab party has been in the governing coalition. It is noted that in the past, Bennett of uh, the um, Yamina party, is it Yamina party? Okay, anyway, has opposed the Palestinian state. However, Abbas, the leader of Ra'am, is not focusing on this issue. Rather, he wants to use Ra'am's position as a kingmaker to improve conditions for Arab Israelis, uh, to create a five-year economic plan, an initiative combating violent crime in the Arab Israeli community and similar issues. Also, he wants to be a cap have a cabinet minister position. The other Arab parties have called him a traitor for joining the government. He said he will not be scolded by them. Uh, there are certainly right-wing Israelis who feel the government's hands will be tied in dealing with certain issues, especially security issues because of Ra'am. But it is noteworthy that 35% to 49% of the Jewish population does support having an Arab party in the government. And this includes 19% to 31% of those who consider themselves right wing. In one article I read, it was suggested that this may actually be in part because of COVID, since there has been much media attention to Arabs and Jews working together in this crisis. So why was this unlikely coalition formed? Uh, several right-wing parties found they could just no longer support Netanyahu in view of the significant corruption charges against him. They were absolutely determined to ensure that he and his party would no longer control the government. Netanyahu, yet Netanyahu has been fighting back and trying to undermine the coalition, arguing that it is really left-wing and detrimental to Israeli security. Edith Silman of Yamina, facing pressure, left the coalition. 
she stated that the government's decision to uphold the high court's ruling that leavened food could be brought into hospitals during Passover was harmful to Israel's Jewish identity, and therefore she couldn't participate in the government any longer. Likud demanded that as a result of this defection and decisions to restrict the police presence on the Temple Mount with Ram's influence on security policy, the government should be dissolved. However, it remains in effect and has accomplished such things as passing a state budget for the first time in three years, raising the retirement age for women, ending the tariffs on fruits and vegetables, and together with the opposition, passing laws for some economic relief for businesses suffering since COVID. Although it has been said that in Israeli government, the right does what it pleases and the left provides public relations, I think we should continue to hope that this unity government really does, in the words of Yair Lapid, do everything in its power to unite and connect all parts of Israeli society. Maybe if parties get used to working together on the smaller things, they will trust each other more to work together on the bigger things. Uh, my sources were articles on the internet from Wikipedia, the BBC, the Jerusalem Post, Haaretz, and International Institute for Strategic Studies. Thank you. Thank you, Yvette. Uh, I'm going to be speaking about a group uh, in Israel of women, and it's a group called Women Wage Peace. It is a grassroots movement that was founded in the summer of 2014 in the aftermath of Operation Protective Edge. It is the largest grassroots movement in Israel and its purpose is to promote a political agreement while involving women in the process. And it's as stated in the UN Resolution 1325. Now, what is UN Resolution 30, 1325? It is a resolution on women, peace and security that was adopted by the United Nations Security Council in Octo on October 31st of 2000. The resolution reaffirms the important role of women in the prevent on, on the prevention and resolution of conflicts, peace, negotiations, peace building, peacekeeping, humanitarian response in a post-conflict reconstruction. It stresses the importance of women's equal participation and full involvement in all efforts for the maintenance and promotion of peace and security. Currently, WWP has over 44,000 members from the right, the center and left of the political spectrum, Jews and Arabs, religious and secular, united in the demand for a mutually binding non-violent agreement between Israelis and Palestinians. And it's, it is involving women in that process. The movement works throughout Israel to raise awareness and engage the public in a discussion about the feasibility of a political resolution. It creates opportunities for dialogue with individuals and groups throughout the formal and informal meetings within the community. The movement also organizes national events such as demonstrations and protests to pressure decision makers to work toward reaching a viable peace. Uh, here is a short video of the Palestinian and Israeli women joining together to work toward a lasting peace. The caption for this video states, after more than 100 years of conflict, which was managed mostly by men, Israeli and Palestinian women say enough. On March 25th of this year, 2000, 2022, hundreds of women from pa the Palestinian movement, Women of the Sun, and the Israeli movement, Women Wage Peace, met at the Dead Sea and signed the Mother's Call. 
they are embarking on a historical move to encourage the leaders of both sides to begin negotiations and to reach an agreement to end the conflict. It happened in Liberia, Ireland, and Colombia. It can happen here now. Now is the time to act together. Together we will succeed. احتياجنا للسلام هو اللي خلانا نصر هنا نيجي ونكون حركة نساء يسمع نساء الشمس לעורר את העמים בשני הצדדים לתמוך בפתרון הסכסוך בדרך של שלום. תפקד חרקת ניסה אשמס לפלסטיניה וחרקת ניסה יסמן הסלם לישראליה על התעאון ללעמל מען. השותפות הזאת, הצעיף של נשות השמש, הצעיף שלנו, החיבור הזה, זה הכוח הנשי שמהיום יוצא לדרך משותפת עד שיהיה פה שלום. بطريقة تانية أنا أفكر بطريقة كيف بدنا نحمي أولادنا وأولاد الأشخاص اللي بالطرف المقابل مين مكان يكون لأنه إحنا بنستاهل أولادنا بيستاهلوا يعيشوا بحرية وبسلام For further information about Women Wage Peace, or to sign their Mother's Call petition, or to donate to their cause, you can go to their website, which is womenwagepeace.org. Thank you so much. Now, Ellen Rothstein was going to present her piece tonight. <clears throat> Unfortunately, she was unable to join us. And she sent me her piece and she asked me to read it for you. So this is about another organization and it's called Hand in Hand. Hand in Hand is a network of integral bilingual schools for Jewish and Arab children in Israel. It was co-founded by Israeli Arab educator Amin Kahalaf and Israeli-American educator, Lee Gordon. They began in 1997 with 50 students at two campuses and have grown to over 2,000 students at seven sites. Their mission is to create a strong and inclusive shared society in Israel with a philosophy that actual living experiences of its students and teachers parents and others who participate in its schools can inspire broad support for social inclusion and civic equality in Israel. In their schools, both Hebrew and Arabic are primary languages of instruction, often with dual teachers in a single classroom. The curriculum includes content fostering respect for the traditions, history, values, holidays, and cultures of all its students. In addition, they offer specialized guidance and mentoring to help students, teachers, and parents express empathy and mutual respect in the most difficult of circumstances. Over the next 10 years, this organization aims to create a network of 10 to 15 integrated bilingual schools supported and enhanced by active communities, altogether involving more than 20,000 Israeli citizens. This organization has been internationally recognized. In December of 2014, 
President Barack Obama commissioned a menorah made by the students at one of their schools and invited two of its students to join the, the President and the First Lady Michelle Obama to the White House for the Hanukkah celebration. May hand to hand provide an example for the world and may they go from strength to strength as they show us a path to peace and unity in Israel and everywhere. And now we're going to present this short video regarding hand to hand. Fear, anger, hate, violence. When you raise children in the middle of a war zone, when Jewish and Arab children do not meet each other in their day-to-day -day life, when they are divided and they go to separate schools, how do you make sure that they don't hate every person from the other side? You bring them together in the same classroom to learn and play side by side. This is what happens every day in hand-in-hand -hand schools where we see that Jews and Arabs can live together and that there is hope for a shared society. I want to live in a society that is fair. I want to live in a society that is free. I want to live in a society that is integrated. Hand in Hand touches the lives of thousands of Jews and Arabs throughout Israel. We are a success story. In 20 years, we've grown from one small class. And today, we have over 1,300 students and a community of more than 6,000 Jewish and Arab parents and staff. Most classes are taught by two teachers, uh, one in Arabic and one in Hebrew. The students in Hand in Hand School learns from each other history, culture, language, and they learn how to see different things in a different point of view. But at the same time, they celebrate their, their, their own identity. Of course, we don't always agree. A lot of the times, it's very difficult. But it doesn't really matter because I still know Yasmin is my friend and will overcome this. I mean, we know each other for more than 10 years, so obviously nothing can like hurt our relationship. So we always have the strong ones. <laughs> I want to live in a society that's safe. I want to live in a society that is just. That is shared. The Hand in Hand community is much more than a few schools. The Hand in Hand community takes part in all kinds of things, uh, dialogue groups, gardening ports, uh, text learning groups, uh, family trips, and all these things together uh, creates this uh, deeper relationships and friendships between uh, the families of the community. I send my kids to Hand in Hand because I believe that they have a right and a responsibility to know as many point of views as to the complex reality here. This is our way of life and we're expanding it. Whoever wants to come in here is more than welcome to come and feel the hope that we have here, to come and give the message to our children that there's another way. We're becoming a movement. We're now gaining more momentum and growing. And more students means more teachers and more resources. Hand in Hand needs your help to remove the barriers and to erase the lines that are dividing society in Israel. Well. All right, that was the, the part of the video that Ellen wanted to share. For the sake of our family and friends, we all sing Shalom Aleichem. And for the sake of Adonai, we'll pray for. 
for peace again and again and again. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem for these holy walls. Let us sing shalom. Praise for the peace of Jerusalem, the place that is our home. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for these holy walls. Let us sing shalom. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the place that is our home. Shalom, shalom, Yerushalayim, shalom, 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 Yerushalayim, shalom, peace of Jerusalem for these holy walls let us sing shalom pray for the peace of Jerusalem the place that is our home pray for the peace of Jerusalem these holy walls let us sing shalom pray for the peace of Jerusalem the place that is our home please keep safe our home we pray for We are in the period of the Omer, the period of counting in between Passover and Shavuot. And so we're going to count the Omer. It's on page 570. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kiddishanu b'mitzvotav vitzivanu al svirat ha-Omer. Hayom Shnaim the Arbaim Yom Shehem Shisha Shavuot Ba Omer. Today is the 42nd day, which is six weeks of the Omer. And we continue now with the Elenu. I invite you, if you're able, to rise. Thank you. 
may be seated. A prayer for the state of Israel. In this sacred moment, give us hope for Israel and her future. Renew our wonder at the miracle of the Jewish state. In the name of the pioneers who made the deserts bloom, give us the tools to cultivate a diversity of Jewish expression in Israel. In the name of our fallen soldiers, Give us courage to stand up to the words and ways of the zealots, those in our own midst and those among our neighbors. In the name of Israeli inventors who have amazed the world with their innovations, help us apply the same ingenuity to finding a path to peace. In the name of all these women and men, grant us the strength to conquer doubt and despair in Israel replacing doubt with action, replacing despair with hope. And let us say, Amen. We turn our thoughts now to those who are no longer with us, our loved ones who have died in the past days or weeks or months, or in past years at this time of the year. I have shared this week's yard site list to the screen. Those of you here in person can see the yard site list in your bulletin. We remember those who have died in the past year. And uh, if you have names to add on Zoom for anyone you're saying the Mourner's Cottage for, please put it into the chat. And I'll give you an opportunity also to add names out loud. We remember those who have died in the past year. Elaine Drucker, Matthew Brunner, Maddie Rosenbaum, Myron Jacobson, Lester Schenker, John Belay, Yefim Polyak, the Reverend Eleanor Lee McGee Street, Arthur Goldstein, Lada Bloom, Irv Golden, Arthur Derry, Andrew Mazella, Joyce Braziller, Linda Gilbert Schneider, 
Della Cohen, Fran Arnowitz, Selma Carl, Harold Carl, Emily Seth, Moshe Usher Reinitz, Huma Saber, Lila Bloomfield, John Carfizi, Andy Glantzman, Todd Zeitlin, John Previtt Jr., Augie Dorio, Janet Esposito, Kay Josephs, Arnold Block, Elizabeth Clark, Kyle McGee Sr., Ida Houston, Louisa Espute, Perry De La Touche, Ira Roth, Roberta Hera, George Liss, the Reverend Claude Park Street, Sylvia Tishkovich, Ellen Belofsky, Cindy Retagliata, Dolores Weinberger, Suzanne Leknos, Shirley Kafker, Lillian Frost Ridgely, Thomas Marinin, Meg Goldate, Marguerite Romeo, and John Young. Included on our yard site list this evening or for this week are Arthur Goldberg, Mona Goldberg's husband, Erwin Joseph, Jocelyn Joseph's husband, Seth Kushner, Linda Kushner Silverman's son, Lorraine Minson, Laurie Silverman's mother-in-law, Richard Pincus, Joan Salisbury's brother, Arthur Pincus, Joan Salisbury's father, and Samuel Rosampique, Roz Baylor's brother. We include those who were shot and killed in Buffalo, New York, in the grocery store, Katie Hockhauser, Azaria Sarfati, Estrella Sarfati, Seal Bader. Um, apparently Lorraine Minson is not Lori Silverman's mother-in-law. So, sorry, Lori. Um, Hold on a minute. Yes, she was my mother-in-law. Oh, okay. <laughs> is it okay that I said that then? Lorraine Minson was my mother-in-law. Okay. All right, so there was a question mark, so I was confused. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Charlotte. On the year at site list is Michelle Paula Caucus. She was Ilsa's, Caucus's daughter. She died at the age of 12, very tragically. And Sandra Crails, who was a loyal temple member and a very dear friend. Thank you. Freema? Okay, um, I can't tell my show, well, I can't say it yet. No. Okay, um, um, Jack Mandel and already, um, okay, Jack Mandel and Betty Will Bell, and I have to put Rochelle Ronick on for next week? Yes. Because she's, she's gonna, she has her funeral on Tuesday. Yeah, so next week. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Linda Kushner Silverman. Linda, would you unmute? Yes. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes. I just want to make a couple comments about my Seth. He should rest in peace. It's seven years. And I'm saying this as a as a what? as a warning for people who want to say things to someone who's passed away, you can't compare it. Uh, a, a foolish woman said to me, well, you had your son 40 years. It's, people do not realize what they say. It doesn't matter how many years. You could have him a hundred years, he's still yours. So uh, it just, it's not a warning, it's just advice. Be careful of what you say. It's, it's, it hurts, it hurts. It's like yesterday for me, uh, I light the candle tomorrow night and I have been thinking of Elaine Drucker all these few days. I, I, I loved her and I miss her and I wasn't able to attend. I have an Ill, uh, I'm not doing well for the moment, but it'll pass. So everyone who's on that list should rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Is anybody Yvette? Eric? Anyone else on Zoom? Yeah. 
We also include all of those who have died from COVID-19 around the world. We include those who have tragically died in the shootings, in, in the murders in the elementary school in Uvalde, Texas, 19 children and two teachers. We include those who were shot and killed in a Buffalo supermarket. We include those who are dying in Ukraine, in Afghanistan, in Syria, and other places where there is conflict. And we include those who have died in terror or disaster or alone and homeless on the streets of our cities. The Mourner's Kaddish is on page 598. And I invite you, if you're able, to rise and join in or to participate according to your own custom. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei raba ba'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute b'chayechon u'v'yomechon u'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael Bagala uvizman kari vimru amen. Yehesh me rabba mivorach leolam ulalme almaya. Yit barach viet tabach viet paar viet romam viet nase. Viet hadar viet ale viet halal shame de kudisha berihu. Le ela min kol birchata vishirata. Tush bechata venechemata. Damiran Belma Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shamaya. Vechaim Alenu Vel Kol Yisrael Vimru Amen. O se shalom Vimru Ma. Huya a se shalom. Alenu Vel Kol Yisrael Vimru Amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to the bereaved wherever they may be. And let us say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Announcements. I don't think that Adrian is here. Is that true? No. Okay. No, it's not true. Oh, okay. So I'll do the announcements. So first of all, very important, next week, uh, it is already June, and in June we are changing the Friday night service time to 7.15. So it'll be light longer, and maybe you'll be able to come more easily. Uh, the bus lane on Church ends at on Church Avenue ends at seven, so there should be some parking on Church Avenue if you arrive right around seven for a seven fifteen service start. Poetry text study is going to move to six, so poetry six to seven services seven fifteen. I know you're not going to be able to come to poetry on Zoom and get over here in time for services. You're going to have to choose or we're going to have to make it hybrid, although I know not everybody would want that. So don't forget, make a note. If you show up at eight, you'll only catch the end. You'll be very late. You'll catch the end. Maybe that's all you want. I don't know. Uh, so tomorrow uh, it is. 
Biyachad is not going to be only on Zoom. It is also going to be in person. So Biyachad from 10 to 10, you know, 50 a.m. And services at 11 a.m. here in the sanctuary. We do not have a bar or bat mitzvah tomorrow. So it's and but you know, and then the following week is Shavuot. Um, it's Arab Shavuot on Saturday, which means it's the confirmation, uh, confirmation for our confirmation kids. So they'll be helping to run the service. We are also going to be honoring Rabbi Pinsky on June 4th and have a special luncheon for her after services. So if you can come to wish her well uh, in her next adventure, that would be great. Um, on Tuesday is gentle chair yoga and gentle qigong with meditation and Jewish wisdom with doctors Gail and Bob Levine Freed. That's Tuesday, 4 p.m. Afternoon Torah study also on Tuesday, but at 1 p.m. with Rabbi Pinsky. On Thursday, June 2nd at 7 p.m. is a sing-along with Noni. So come to learn the songs and sing along to get ready for our special musical Shabbat service with band on June 10th. Um, next Saturday, again, Arab Shavuot, from 7 to 9 p.m., we are going to have our Shavuot Tikkun celebration. So we're going to study Psalms and see what we can get out of Psalms. And we're going to sing and we're going to enjoy each other's company. We are going to be in person and on Zoom, but I think the experience will be better in person if you can do it. Then on Sunday morning, June 5th at 10.30 a.m. will be our festival morning service with Yizker. That will be multi-access as usual. June 12th, coming up very soon now, it's only a couple of weeks away, uh, is our Bashir Journal Luncheon. Uh, June 12th, Garjulo's Restaurant, honoring Adrian Knoll, our wonderful temple president. Uh, you can call the temple office to make your reservation and ask questions if you have them. You can also uh, make a reservation on the website, I'm pretty sure. There will be a goods, goods and services auction June 7 through June 12. For more information, contact Pam Blansman, Karen Eichel for the temple office. And uh, after Shavuot, we're going to have B'nai Mitzvah every week through July 2nd. So that'll be fabulous. Uh, and I think that that is all of the announcements. Anything I missed, anybody? Yvette. Okay, so the spring food drive has begun. So you can bring food to the synagogue. It should be non-perishable, unexpired and desirable. Um, <laughs> um, uh, so between eight and one on weekdays is usually when uh, a good time to bring stuff because the office is open then, or you can bring it when you come to services. There should be a bin for the food in the sanctuary, but um, Alice can direct you uh, as to where to leave the food. Anything else? How long is that going, Yvette? The 24th of what, June? Right, because it's already past that in May. Okay, yeah, until the 24th of June. So it's a spring summer food drive. Okay. That's true. It is less catchy than the spring food drive. So, okay. If that is all the announcements, we are going to conclude with Hatikva. So I invite you, if you're able, to rise. Oh.
May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God lift God's face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechemim haaret, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Have a good day tomorrow. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. The yes, it was beautiful service. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat everybody. Shalom, everyone. Beautiful Shabbat service. Beautiful very nice. service. Debbie Shabbat was here too. She heard it quiet. too. Very, very quiet. <laughs> invisible. <laughs> Not quite invisible. But anyway, it was a wonderful service. Oh, wonderful. Very wonderful yes. service. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Artsa did good. Thank you. Nice seeing you again, Linda. We have a phone. Hi, Jane. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Okay. Hi, Jane. <laughs> Hi, 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 Diane. <laughs> Hi, everybody else. Hi. 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 <laughs> hi, hi. <laughs> hi, hi. You are oh, it's closed. Five percent remaining. Mm -hmm. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, Rabbi. Bye, Rabbi. Yeah.